Right, so for the first one, I think a couple of you guys have already seen this on one of my short posts on Instagram. But in order to create a good looking sine wave animation, you're gonna have to rely on using the wave warp effects. But sometimes when you drag out the options for the effect, um, you're gonna get some jittery pixelation going on over here, as well as some inconsistencies in the way that the effect handle the stroke thickness. So how you're gonna get around that is to actually drag the stroke thickness down until you can barely see out what is going on in the line. Right click, go to layer styles, apply a stroke and then drag out the stroke size. So what's going on over here is that the stroke in the layer styles is actually covering um, what is apparent in the line as well as the effect itself so basically what we just did was getting the stroke thickness to drop down until we can till, until we can barely see out the inconsistency of the stroke thickness uh, being affected by the wave warp and then make up for all of that uh, lost real estate by using a later style stroke uh, i love motion design but nah bro i use canva Right, hello from France. Um, not actually in France, but uh, today we're gonna take a look at 10 new tips and after effects that I've found to not only improve your workflow, but also helps you a little bit on the visual side of things. I hope you guys enjoy this one and let's skibbity dope dope yes yes into the video. Oh my God. Right, so this next one is pretty handy if you need to work consecutively between two uh, composition like this one. So what you can actually do in After Effects is taking this composition right here, the comp number two, and drag it out. As you can see, you can actually set up uh, in various uh, matters, drag it out over here to a uh, separate display of the timeline. And so jumping between the two timelines over here is going to be a lot more flexible, you know, if you need to compare elements from one side to the other. And what that actually helps with is that you can actually link properties from one composition to the other way more quickly. So for example, over here in comp number two, I have a text layer. Oh, it's just missing an S. And this one over here, I have the same text layer, but only with slightly different variety in color and font. So now I can actually drop these uh, properties down, going to the source text over here, as well as dropping the top tip uh, source text down in the first comp, and then using the pick whip in the source text of the first comp, match it with the source text of the second comp. So in this comp, whatever I'm typing in, uh, maybe for example, Morsu Pi La Mi is going to be updated onto the uh, text in the first comp. Only this time still keeping its vari variety in, in the color, the font size, the typeface, and sometimes even animation. For example, down here, I don't want to have to use a pick whip to drag the uh, rotation module of the wave layer over here to the text. But I don't want to have to do that every time, um, you know, I move on to a new layer. Instead, I could just highlight this rotation property over here, go to edit and copy with property links. And then I can just highlight all of these layers down here, hit control V. And all of these rotation properties of all of these wave layers and only the rotation properties will be linked to the rotation value of the text layer. So if I rotate the text, as you can see, all of those which have the rotation property linked to the text layer will be rotated as well. Would that, would that, it, was, would that it was so simple? Another interesting thing you can actually do with copying uh, property links is to trust your uniqueness and also copying the entire range of properties. So right now, if I highlight this text layer over here, I had to edit and copy with property links and hit control V. And if I click on the second one and hit E, it will drop down all of the available expressions. And as you can see, all of the linkable properties inside of the second text layer is already linked to the first one. 
And the same goes for if this layer has a, an effect or something, you can go back to the wave warp effect over here. Do that same thing again, edit, copy with property links and hit control V. Boom. Uh, as you can see, all of, the, uh, all of the properties inside of the wave warp has been linked to the properties of the wave warp inside of the first original text layer. And yeah, God bless After Effects. So for the next one, some of you may have known if you try to draw out a new shape layer using any of these uh, shape tools over here, uh, the default position of the anchor point would be in the middle of the composition. And all you need to do is maybe to take the pan behind tool over here, hover it around uh, while holding control to get in, in the middle of the shape. But you know, if that's too much of a hassle to you, and sometimes it is for me, for me to have to admit, uh, you're gonna want to go over here to edit, hit preferences, general, in the general setup, navigate to the center anchor point in new shape layers, uh, click on that option and boom. So now every time you try to draw out a new shape layer like this, the anchor point is gonna stay in the middle of that uh, new shape that you just created. But bear in mind this option only works if you try to draw out a shape out of thin air like I'm trying to do here, which means that you're not selecting any of these shapes and just go to a random position on the composition and draw out a new one. Um, what I usually do is go into layer, new shape layer and draw out my shape, which in this case is not going to actually work. So another tip that I really like to exploit when I'm doing some social media content, for example, is to turn a layer into an adjustment layer. So we have this little circle over here that I created before and I'm gonna I'm gonna apply a camera lens blur effect onto it. And as you can see as a default, uh, this effect is gonna give us a really nice uh, realistic simulation of what a camera focal lens blur is gonna look like. But if I go over here to this several options next to the layer uh, selection over here, I'm gonna click on that to enable the adjustment layer option and maybe drag this layer on top of here so we can see better. So as a result of that move, the camera lens blur effect, instead of applying onto the layer itself, the effect has been confined to wherever the area of our layer is. We had a stroked out circle before. If I increase the stroke size, like that, it's gonna increase the area of wherever the shape has landed on and inside of that area of the layers below of this uh, specific shape layer over here it's gonna be affected by this setup of effects that we had yeah that's really good if you want to block out uh, a section of the composition never gonna give you up <laughs> So here's another built-in features that I really like to exploit. So imagine a design where you get a bunch of text layers lying around like this and all of them saying various things and you want to change the group that says top tips over here to say something else. So what you're going to want to do is hit Ctrl A to select all of your uh, curtain layer. Hit go to File, Scripts and navigate to the Find and Replace Text Script. I'm gonna want to find all the text that says Top Tips <laughs> and replace it with something maybe like... Like that. So I'm gonna start out with clicking Find All and as you can see all of the text that says Top Tips has been selected out for you and click on Replace All and boom, all of the text that says top tips has now been replaced with that. And not only can it find full words or full sentences, but you can also find individual words inside of a text layer as well. So right now, maybe if I wanna reverse all of that, I wanna try and find this word, B and G U, and I wanna replace that with something like Hello Kitty. So I'm gonna click Find All and replace it boom with hello kitty and the second part still remains i'm really glad this uh, script exists right next one region of interest is gonna be this little icon down here and when you click on it and drag out the cursor onto the composition it's gonna create a window that tells the composition to only render whichever resolution you want it to render out but to preview that window only, so if I play it through like that, only that sort of uh, section, that region of interest will be available if you get a pretty hefty 
uh, setup of animation. This can save you quite a bit of rendering time if you just want to see how uh, one section of an animation is going to look like. And I'll also hit Alt click to reset the definition of the region again. Uh, say my name bro. Okay. <laughs> Right, so the last tip, it's gonna be a question where I uh, I get asked a lot on a lot of my breakdown videos. How can I preview all of the wireframing, all the lines, all of the borders outside of the layers? And that has all to do with this button over here. If you click on this button and whichever layer you selected over here, when you preview it, it's gonna keep that uh, sort of the, the definition of the border of that layer. But what if, you know, what if you want to see the wireframing? What, what if you want to see the box that's containing the layer itself? Um, so what you're going to want to do is over here to the fast preview section, drop it down and click on the wireframe option over here. And that's going to give you the actual borderline of the layers that's on top. So when you preview it, it's going to play you the actual animation as well as the wireframing, the detailed wireframing of the layer. You know, most people just stop at uh, enabling this box over here. But if you want to go further and see out all the wireframing, all the background wireframing of the shape, then this fast preview wireframe option over here is for you. And that wraps up my video for uh, another 10 tips in After Effects that I can find. So if you've been paying attention, I've been saying gibberish stuff uh, coming from my channel, Instagram channel. I actually asked my audience to like type in anything and I'll just uh, say it in the video. And I got a couple more that I haven't said. Toothless dance. <laughs> Uh, what else? Good evening, viruses, bacteria, and germs. That, that would have been a nice opening. Um, <laughs> well, you know what they say, uh, you can dime a dozen, but you can uh, dozen a dime. Another quote that I like is, pizza goes great with ketchup and pineapple does belong. Pizza. And of course, sushi. But yeah, still, I tried my best to fit all of those in, but sorry if I couldn't get to you, uh, to yours in the video. This video has been fun to make. I hope you guys enjoy it. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oyasumi. I hope I got it right.